Welcome back to Way of the Wrench and on today's very special episode we are going to continue with our pinball install and today I'm going to show you how to use a program called X-Patter so that we can turn the buttons on our front of our cabinet into keyboard strokes so that we can actually adjust pinball volumes without the need of a keyboard. Super cool. Grab a root beer, stay tuned. So first off, if you haven't watched the video on how to install Pinball and being able to adjust all your volume stuff using a keyboard, I highly recommend you go back and watch that video. I'll put a link above for that for you just to go see. Now, today's video is how we're gonna take the keyboard and get rid of it and turn some of the buttons on the front of the cabinet into shifted buttons and shifted functions so that we can have keyboard presses off of those and still operate our Pinball. Now, the reason why I am having to do this is because I have a virtual pin controller and it does not have a shifted button. Whereas if you had Pinscape working on your KL25Z board, then you could have that shifted button already automatically there. Now, uh, XPatter will allow you to add shifted buttons as well as turn any button you want into different presses depending on what you do. So. Let's get XPatter installed and show you how that works. Okay, very first thing we need to do is actually get XPatter. So go to XPatter.com. And then once you're there, you're gonna click on whatever language you need. Mine's English. I'm in the Great White North, Canada. Now, XPatter is not free, but it isn't expensive. It's only $10.99 and you get a lifetime um, service for it. Uh, so any updates in the future you get. There are some free options out there, such as Joy2Key and some other ones out there. Um, I decided to go with XPatter because to me it seemed a lot more simple and a little bit more user friendly and it's got lots of uses, um, not even just for a virtual pinball cabinet, but if you're doing any kind of gaming on your PC, then that works good for that as well. So the way this works on here is you have to send him uh, your email and then they get you a personal email back to you uh, so that you can actually get the link to buy it and get it installed. So go ahead and put that in your email and then press go. Once you send your email address, you're gonna get something sent back to you for a download link. So just click on that. Okay, once you get your email back, you'll have a little kind of account like this. And then there will be a link that you will have to send to make payment. And then once you've done that, from this kind of account screen, you will be able to download the actual software to your computer. So go ahead and do all that and then download XPatter. Okay, click here to download. Okay, and then once you've downloaded XPatter, you can go show in folder. Now you can put this xpatter.exe anywhere you want. Let's throw it on your desktop or to keep things kind of all together, we can put it where our pinball stuff is. So we can go to this PC, local disk, go to vpinball and we'll put it in this folder right here. Okay, go ahead and double left click to get this started. Now this is gonna pop up because it doesn't understand what it is. So you can go to more info and then just hit run anyway. Okay, we're gonna press start on here. Go ahead, press start again, and start a third time. Okay, pick the language that you want, press start. Okay, and then go ahead and press start here. Okay, and we're fine with having the program location here, so we're gonna put program location. Otherwise, you can go to my documents and start selecting where you'd like it. Okay, for this one, just go ahead and push associate. Okay, when that window closes out, it's actually got XPatter already working in the background. It will automatically start already, so we don't have to put this in the start menu. And if you look down here, you can see that it's already running and we can open it down here. Okay, so the first time you open this up, it will not have anything in here. So we are going to click new and you get this screen here. Now, I'm not gonna go through everything here because we only need certain things. Image is literally if you wanted to put kind of an image of a game controller or something very specific to help you keep track of the buttons that you're going to add. Now I'm not gonna add an image, but you could totally take a picture of the front of your cabinet and that might help you kind of keep track of what buttons are what for later, but uh, I think it's pretty self-explanatory. So we're gonna skip image. At this point, we're not adding any sticks and D-pads. All we need is buttons. So we're gonna go down here to buttons and we are going to add a button to this layout. Now to be able to add a button, you just have to start pressing buttons on the cabinet and when you press one button, it will pop something up here and then you can reposition it where you would like it so that it kind of looks like the front of your cabinet. So for example, I'm going to start with my left MagnaSave. 
and I just pushed it once. And so I want to move this somewhere kind of over here. And now when I push the MagnaSave button, you can see that it is detecting it. Okay, now I'm going to start with the left flipper and I'm going to move it just a little bit in front of it. Okay, and then I'm going to add my start button. And that's on the left side of the cab on the front. Then I'm going to add my extra ball button. And then I'm going to add my uh, coin return buttons, which is now my coins. And they're, they're both the same, the left and right, so I'm just going to basically have the one. Okay, and I want to use the launch ball button. Just left click and drag. And we'll put it over here. And then we got the right flipper button. And the last one we're going to use is our right magnus save. Perfect. Now, before we go any further, just double check that you haven't made an error and that each of these buttons are the right buttons so there's no confusion that way. So, left magnus save, left flipper, start button, extra ball button, coin return button, launch ball, right flipper, right magnus save. Perfect. Now at this point, these buttons don't have anything associated with them, except that you can see that XPatter is recognizing when you press them. Okay, now that we have all of these buttons set up where we roughly need them to be, we can press OK. And you can see that those buttons are there. And you can see that they are still detecting all of the buttons that we have put in. Now to get these buttons to actually input a different keyboard stroke when you press them, so that we can get Pinval working, you all you have to do is left click on here and then a keyboard pops up which you can select what it is. Now you can put anything you want in here but like I said in the last video you have to watch which buttons you put in here and especially button combos because in the Windows operating system or in future pinball or visual pinball or FX3 these different button keyboard presses you're putting in here might have other uses and other things will start popping up and other unexpected things. Now I've already gone ahead and played with uh, the buttons for what I've got set up on my machine. So if you use what I use in this video, then you should be able to get it work without any issues. So this one here, you just left click on it and then you can pick what you want. So I want number one on the pad. Okay, so what this button is now, when you press that, it's going to input the Magna save on the left side for the visual pinball, but it will also be giving us the number one key from our number pad um, at the same time, which means nothing in the video game, but for pinball it will. Okay, and then you're just gonna go through and do all the rest. So this one here, I've got number pad two. My start button I'm gonna put as F7. This one is the coin button. Coin button is going to be F8. The right Magnus save is going to be, it's going to be this right bracket. The right flipper is going to be the left bracket. All right, so for the extra ball button here, I don't want it to be just another keyboard press every time I press it. I only want to have this certain keyboard stroke inputted when I hold it down, so that way it acts like a shifted button. So we're gonna left click on this, and this one I wanna have as left windows. And then we have to do one more thing here. We're gonna go to advanced. And then when we click on here, you have the ins option to insert uh, another block. So we're going to do that and then we're going to use this one here. So this one is an add and hold zone. So when you add this hold zone, you can specify the amount of time that it has to be held for. And once it's met that criteria, so in this case, it's um, 0.2 of a second. And you can change that right here. Just put it on the hold zone button and then you can actually increase that time or decrease it. Uh, and I would recommend putting 0.2 seconds. So as long as you hold the button for more than 0.2 of a second, then it will give you the Windows key. And then press OK. Then close this out. 
And then we're gonna do the same thing with our launch ball button. And so what I'm gonna do is this one is going to be held in so that we can do global volume up and down. We can do night mode, we can do mute. And if you hold this down, you also get adjusting the table volumes. And then when you hold down the launch ball button, then I'm gonna have it so that this is my rear exciters up and down. And this one will be for my front exciters up and down. And this one here would be for the back glass ROM music to go up and this would be ROM music to go down. So in this case, I've decided to add two shifted buttons. So this one here, we're going to make, we're gonna make control left. Then we're gonna do advanced again. Put the cursor here insert a block, add a hold, put it over the hold and adjust the time accordingly so that you get about 0 0.2, 0 0.3 seconds. Click OK. Now, once you've got all these buttons um, put in, these will not be saved. So what you're going to have to do is go into here and go save as and I'm going to put it in the virtual pinball folder like I had before, and I'm going to name it virtual pin controller, which is already there. So just press save. Okay. And then this one will also be blanked. So you're going to floppy disk save icon. So if you click on that, it'll do the same thing. Ask you where you want to save it and ask you what you want to call this profile. Just name it whatever you want. I, I labeled mine virtual pinball cabinet and then press OK. And that way, if this ever gets closed out, you aren't going to save all your settings here. So now that that's done, you can go ahead and close this. And then you can go down here and you can see it's working in the background there. And here's Pinvol working in the background. So we're gonna left click on that and open up our Pinvol. Okay, so inside of Pinvol, I've already gone ahead and adjusted these to match all of the different combos and buttons that I just put in for X Patter. So you can go ahead and copy exactly what I got here if you're using the same buttons. Uh, if you don't remember how to change these, all you do is you click on the box and then it'll ask you which key or the shift key you're going to use. So in this case, it was control. And then you press a key. So let's say I wanted it to be G. So you can see that it changed to G. However, for this one, I actually want it to be F7. Okay, so you just go through these and make them match the button combos that you want. And then jump to the next one. So table keys. These ones here was windows and left and right brackets. And then the global keys was Windows plus the number one pad, number two pad, F7 and F8 for these. So just make it match these. And then at this point, you can go ahead and just minimize this out. And then go ahead and open up Baller Installer and try it out on your machine. So let's open up Leprechaun King and I've, I've muted the volume here so that we don't have any issues with YouTube. Okay, so here we go. I'm gonna hold in my extra ball button and then press start, which should be night mode. There we go, and I can trigger back on. I can input the global volume up or down. I can do the table volume up or down. And I can mute it with the coin button. Perfect, okay, that's that one. And then the other shift button was the launch ball. So if I hold this in and I push the left and right flippers, that's for my exciters. Look at that, perfect control, awesome. And then for the rear, up and down, and back glass volume with the start button was up, and coin return button forward down. So this is all working perfectly and no keyboard needed. Sweet. All right, and don't forget that we have to add X pattern into our startup folder. Otherwise, the next time you shut this down and turn it back on, it won't work anymore because X pattern hasn't been turned on. So I just did a uh, restart, and if I open up here, you can see Pinvol is working, but XPatter is gone. So to do that, just go back to where your XPatter is. So VPinball folder. Right here, we're going to right click on that, and we're going to make a shortcut. Okay, and then on your keyboard, you're going to press the Windows plus R key to open up your run command, and then in here, you're going to type shell colon startup and then click OK. And then it's going to open up your startup folder. So everything in here is what's going to get opened up. And then what you can do is just right click 
and cut a shortcut for X powder and then right click and paste it right in there. And that way when the PC starts up, it will also start up your X powder. To get X powder to open up but stay minimized so it's not in the way while you're playing pinball, you can go up to here, click on the wrench, and you're gonna to wanna to click start with minimized, auto minimize. That way it'll start it up but it'll put it in the background. And then the other thing you can do is you can go Windows R key, type in shell colon startup, and you're gonna right click on your X pattern shortcut, go to properties, and then where it says run here, you're gonna to wanna to set it to minimized rather than normal window. Click apply, click OK. There's a wrap in another video from Way of the Wrench, this time on how to use X Pattern to get your pinball working without a keyboard and just the buttons on the front of your cab. If you have any questions about what we did in the video, put them down in the comment section below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. And if you haven't already, why don't you follow us on Instagram? That way you can get all the behind the scenes stuff going on in between videos. Till next time, take it easy.